bei Vorwerk. Mackie's new loose change menu. There we go. Let's get rid of that. We certainly don't want Mackers, do we? We want to be eating food we've made in our thermo mix. Uh, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michelle Moss and I am joined this evening by Mandy and Diana, two gorgeous teammates. We seem to be a little bit of a dynamic trio at the moment. I said dynamic duo yesterday and that just didn't add up. So um, <clears throat> I do enjoy presenting with them and we all learn from each other and have a laugh every day. So we're so happy that you've been able to join us this evening. We had over 30 people registered for tonight and a few people say, I've registered because I want the recording. I can't come. I've got another, you know, I've got something else on. But we're really flattered and we love that you enjoy watching them and and uh, we love the feedback that we get and how inspired you are by what we do. So tonight's demo dishes were discussed about using the two items that are currently our gift with purchase, either with a straight purchase or a trade-up offer, which are the cutter and our blade cover peeler. What we did learn today and what most of you may already know is that this offer ends on Monday, but we have learned that the new offer is actually going to start tomorrow. So over the course of the next couple of days, you have a choice of which offer you'd like to go with. Don't we all love choice, right? This one or that one. If someone just says, oh, this is what you're getting, it's like, oh, we've got a choice. So you've got until Monday to decide which offer you like. And the new offer, I'm excited to tell you, is a free bulb blade mint set a beautiful cookbook. In fact, I'll grab it because I've got one in there. A uh, beautiful hardcover coffee table cookbook and, wait for it, a $200 voucher for Woolworths to do your grocery shopping. Wow. Um, I could see some excited look on some faces then. So these are the two offers. Our current offer, for those who aren't sure, is our cutter, uh, our blade cover peeler, which you're going to see with Diane this evening, and a $300 mixed shop voucher. So with that voucher, you could choose to buy an extra bowl blade and meat set. So they're both amazing choices. It's really about what will work for you and what you're doing in your kitchen. So we're going to show you these ones tonight. Um, and then you'll obviously have the option of knowing what the other one is. But keep in mind, the cutter is also a host reward. So if you go with the other option, you could host a demo and then access the cutter that way. So there's lots of choices. And if you want to sort of understand in more detail, please speak to your consultant. Now, joining me this evening also is my special guest appearance, TM31. So I wanted to have them side by side. So for those Team 31 owners who are sort of going, you know, what's the difference? I mean, there's some obvious differences, the screen and the size of the bowl, but what does that really mean? So we'll talk about a little bit about that tonight as well. But really the, the biggest thing with the TM6 is that, as the video says, it gets better and better. So we have all these amazing modes and I'll actually flip you back to my screen. I've just been playing with some... Um, playing with some recipes. Now, what I'm going to do is make the screen a little bit darker so it's easier for you to see. There we go. That's better. And go in here and have a look. So when you are when you turn the TM6 on, this is your home screen. And for those who are used to cooking with a TM31, the language that you're used to is time, temperature and speed, and that hasn't changed. So the simplicity of upgrade is real. You, you don't have, you, you will learn some new things because you've got new capabilities, but they're not hard to learn. So here we've got time, temperature and speed. Now with your 31, you've got a little button that's got reverse. Here it's just in the blade on the screen. So tap the blade and it becomes your reverse. Tap it again and it and disables the reverse. Now you may be able to see there, there's three dots on the bottom of the screen. What that means is that there's three screens. So as you know, there's no scrolling on your TM31. So what you've got here are 18 different modes. Now, when we first got the TM6, there were only nine. So just to give you a little bit of an idea, a bit like when you turn your phone on and there's an update, you'll turn your TM6 on and there's an update there as well. So lots of different modes there. So the first three along the top are the ones that you've got with your TM31. We've got scales, we've got a dough mode, and we've got turbo. The difference with the scales is they do weigh in one gram increments, which I know uh, for some savoury cooking is not so relevant, but for some baking and sort of more chefy type cooking, uh, they love that part of it. The dough mode you've got and the turbo mode you've got. Then there are all these other modes that are new and amazing. So we will go through those um, 
as we go through the demo tonight. But certainly I'd encourage you to have a demo at home just with yourself and a couple of friends. You choose the menu and we can you can go through those in, in quite a lot of detail. But just to give you a little intro, when you go into any of these modes and you press the little eye on the top, it gives you instructions on how to use them. So again, a lot more options than Team 31, but very intuitive and quite easy to use as well. So not to be overwhelmed. If we go in the other direction, that's where we've got our Cookie Do platform. So for those who are unfamiliar, Cookie Do is like our Netflix for recipes. So it has a whole range of recipes. In fact, over 90,000 recipes. You can type in an ingredient. You can type in a genre. So you might go, I want to make a curry. And then just curries will come up. Or you might type in chicken and then you'll get chicken soup, chicken curry, chicken lasagna, chicken enchiladas. So, you know, chicken pie, chicken burgers, etc. So it's really helps meal plan. Because if you talk to anyone, you know, about what's happening in the kitchen, one of the hardest things is not actual cooking. It's thinking of what to cook. So that's where Cookie Do is incredible. It has a lot of other features as well, shopping lists, and you can send those shopping lists to Woolies to get your groceries delivered or organise a click and collect, which is why Woolies, we've partnered with Woolies for this great offer for you guys with the voucher if you go with that option. Anyway, I feel like I've given a very lot of information in a short period of time, but just for those who don't know, the price of a TM6 is 2579 and it does come with everything that you need to come to start cooking, including the, the offer, either offer. Uh, and if you are trading up from a team 31, we actually give you a $380 uh, cash back off your TM6 to allow for the fact that you are a loyal customer and a, a trade in price for your team 31. So that brings your price down to 2199. We do have a variety of payment options, including pay, uh, finance or um, credit card. And then for the full price, we have the option of Easy3 as well. And we always have the option of joining our team, which means you can buy a Thermix, come on board, buy a business kit and start your business. Or you might decide to put a deposit on a Thermix and earn your Thermix as you join the business. So lots of options there. But anyway, we will talk about those a bit more later. But I know you're here to not just hear me talk, but to see some cooking. So we're going to go over to the gorgeous Diana first because her dish uh needs a bit of time in the oven once she's prepared it and it's definitely a family favorite in all our households so i'd be interested to know who wants to make it after you've seen diana make it tonight so thank you diana over to you hi everyone diana here so what i am making is um a gratin daffinoise so basically your classic potato bake so a lot of people think of the thermix either a kitchen tool or this all-in-one kitchen but forget that it it's actually fantastic for a lot of side dishes. So if you're still having a barbecue or a roast in the oven or something else is happening, don't forget about your Thermix. It's got great side dishes um, and even desserts and breakfast and all other things as well. So what I am going to show you today is this blade cover um, peeler accessory. So this doesn't normally come with your Thermix, but one of our offers, you'll actually get one for free. Um, and what this is used for is to peel potatoes and other vegetables on a um, Mandy likes to use it to peel um, ginger. I love to um, use it to peel my garlic, especially when I'm making my curry pastes. Um, so, and it works really well with baby beetroot as well. So you don't have to get your fingers all dirty. And we have a special mode in the TM6. So when we swipe across here, as uh, Michelle was mentioning, there's all these different modes. So I'm just going to pop on the peeler mode there. So it does all the thinking for you. Now with the bowl there, the blades always stay in and this little attachment, just pops on you just twist it on like this and the blade cover peeler it is used to um peel like i said your vegetables and so forth but it's also used for a lot of the slow cooker dishes and also if you want to do some sous vide cooking which is super fancy and another thing that i like to use it for is poaching my eggs and it does a fantastic job so now i have just bought your regular white potatoes um, that you normally get in a two kilogram bag from Woolworths just to show you that these are no special potatoes they're just going to pop in here and um, another feature which you have um, on the old Thermix 30 and 31 is built-in scales and you will still have them here. So I'm going to pop the scales up because with the potatoes there, we're just going to add about 600 grams of water. 
So usually um, we peel about, when I do my potatoes, about 800 grams. Oops, I'm a bit over with the water, but that's okay. Um, 800 grams. Now it does cause a bit of frothiness. So here's a little tip. You can actually add um, a teaspoon of olive oil or some sort of oil and it will decrease the amount of frothiness. Um, I'm not going to bother tonight, but that's okay. So let's pop on the peeler mode there. And all we need to do is turn the dial and those potatoes are going to peel themselves. So absolutely fantastic. If you've got five kilos to do at Christmas, so think about that. Um, but it's hands-free for me now. So should we jump on to Mandy? You want right, to go over to Mandy? Thanks, Diana. We'll see you in four minutes. Hi, Mandy. Hi, thank you very much. Um, so there's a question in the chat, actually, Diana or um, Michelle, you might want to answer that one. Um, all right, so I um, the recipe I'm making actually uses the Thermix cutter and the blade cover peeler, but I'm not going to go through the cutter. I've actually prepped that using the cutter, my vegetables, um, but uh, because Michelle's going to show you that in detail. But I am making a really awesome salad which is the coconut poached chicken um, using the Thermix cutter. So I'm gonna start cooking. Um, it's asking me for 80 grams of raw unsalted peanuts. Popping my lid on. Three seconds speed five. And then I'm going to pop them into a small bowl because they're actually going to be a bit of a garnish um, at the end. So there we are. There's, you know, a bit of a mixture of, um, of how they've been chopped up. Some are smaller and some are bigger. Put those out. Okay. And then moving straight on, I have a two centimetre piece of ginger. It might be a little bit generous. Don't tell my husband because I, I'm very keen on ginger. Um, that can go in. Um, two red chilies, which I have cut in half, and I've left the seeds in, but you can absolutely take the seeds out. With all our recipes on here, they um, it's guided cooking. So you can add, take out, don't want chili, don't have the chili. And then I've got two macroot lime leaves. Have you noticed they've changed their names? Um, that's going in. And I'm going to pop... The lid on, again, three seconds, speed seven. Never ceases to amaze me, really, this um, Thermomix, because um, look at that. How long would it take you to do that by hand? I was um, cooking with someone the other day, and I thought I had no Thermomix. I have no um, knife skills because I've got a Thermomix. I don't need them. So anyway, I'm going to put, oh, straight down the sides and tip it up. And then 60 grams of fish sauce. It's going back on. Five seconds speed five. So it's really just um, mixing it all up together. And then I do need to put that into a bowl. So this is part of the dressing. And just a reminder, oh gosh, don't put your head over it. <laughs> Chilies, goodness me. Um, always when you're scraping, push down in, um, to the bottom and go in a clockwise direction. Although Michelle was talking to us um, yesterday about that's fine if you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, um, it makes things a little bit awkward. But, but generally, if you go in a clockwise direction, you're hitting the rounded side of the blades, not the um, uh, not the other side. Um, Diana, if we need to come back to you, just let me know. I've got two seconds left. Okay, all right, well, let's go back to you and then I can continue afterwards. That's fine too. So I just want to, without tipping all this onto the laptop, um, just show you there that 
is the potatoes all peeled and you can see there's a bit of frothiness so just to decrease that if you want to you can just add a teaspoon of oil so what i'm going to do now is just pour that down the sink um pour all this down the sink you can actually use this to water your plants so it's actually very good um but i'm just going to rinse this and just to show you um well i've got some that i've just done earlier now, this has actually worked and peeled those potatoes beautifully there. So I'll just rinse these off. So if somebody wants to jump on quickly and then I'll assemble the cutter and show everyone how I slice um, the potatoes in the cutter in about a matter of seconds. Awesome, Diana. I'll just go on with my next um, little thing here. So, um, so now I am actually going to put my blade cover peeler in. Um, I haven't washed the... The, the bowl, but it's just going there as Diana did, just sitting on top there. Um, there is a little video on this, but um, so if you're unsure, you can just press the video um, and it will show you exactly how to do it. Then I'm going to add 800 grams of coconut milk because I'm going to poach this chicken. Now, I don't know what brand you guys use, but the Iron brand is, is popular with us. Uh, no additives and preservatives in um, in the iron brand. I might have shortchanged me, but there's no additives and preservatives. <laughs> Maybe the additives and the preservatives take up um, take up the other forty grams in the other tins. No, there is a little bit more here. Probably close enough. Then I have um, two stalks of lemongrass, the white part only, cut into halves and bruised. I have two more of these lovely lime leaves and 40 grams of brown sugar. Uh, I also have 40 grams of lime juice. Um, I only realised, I don't know, it, 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 when you're cooking Asian food, Lime juice is so important. It adds so much flavour. It's just awesome. Okay. Uh, and then what I've got to do is just, just going to start heating up for four um, minutes. I'm just going to put the simmering basket on top. Um, TM6 simmering basket has a um, has a lid for TM31 owners. Uh, and it's just going to heat up. It's on reverse because we don't want those things chopped up. And um, it's four minutes, 100 degrees on reverse. So over to Diana. Okay, I am back. So I'm making the potato bake and this is um, a recipe that actually uses the Thermix cutter. So um, all the recipes in Cookie Do have an image there of the finished product. So if you're like me and a visual person, you want to know what it looks like, you'll have a picture there and all the information about the recipe below the difficulty. This one's quite easy. Um, it also has a nutritional facts um, and hints and tips. So let's get cooking. So um, it's just asked me to preheat my oven, which I have already done, and um, to get a ceramic dish ready, which I have. I'll just skip this bit. So this is about um, weighing the potatoes. So now we're going to attach, um, pop the cutter in. So we start off with this um, shaft, and that's going to go into the centre there like so. And you've actually got step-by-step -step pictures and diagrams here as well. So then we pop the bucket that goes in there. So the good thing about this is that it's going to catch all our sliced potatoes and the bowl will stay nice and clean. Now we're going to then pop the slicing disc on and the disc actually has images there. So this one is for slicing. And if you look on the other side, it has, oh, I'm just trying to catch it in the light, um, an image of um, grating pieces. So we're slicing, so we actually want this side up. And we do have a little saying, um, slate for slicing, gray for grating. So that's going to pop on like so. And it's got a little picture there. So pop that on there. And the cutter also has a pusher that you can feed your vegetables in. And the good thing is, is that you'll have a wide area for wide vegetables and fruit and the small ones. So the small ones are really good if you're trying to slice up some radishes or skinny carrots and so forth. So we'll just press next there. Um, 
There we go. And it's already preset. So we just need to, we can already start popping our potatoes in there and then turn the dial. Can we just pop our potatoes in like so? So I'm just going to do half of those potatoes just for now. And then that's my dish. I'm just using this cast iron dish. Um, this is from the mix shop as well. And have a look at the potatoes, how beautifully and evenly those have sliced. So I'm just going to pop them in the bottom of my baking dish. And then I'll just repeat that step. So if Mandy, did you want to go next? Um, or do you want to stay on me? Um, oh, you're, you're good at talking. Am I? <laughs> you know you're good we at talking. We all know what a great talker I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you know, I've, got a, I've got 40. Actually, no, you can come back to, I'll come back to me because I've got 40. Yep. You can still have this. No, you, we'll go to you if you like. Yep. I'm, I'm just going to lay these pretty and um, keep slicing. Yeah. Okay. Um, standing joke with the ladies. I'm not being rude to her. We just, um, yeah. <laughs> we just muck around. We just have fun. We do. We have lots of fun together, don't we? We do have lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. We had so much fun yesterday. I know Gay was there yesterday. We had, we had a lovely time yesterday. Anyway, I have 20 seconds left on this and um, I can preview and see what's coming up. It says add. 500 grams of chicken fillets cut into quarters. So I've got those ready. They're just sitting in here. I pulled them out of the fridge just before. And I'm going to put the simmering basket back on top. Oh, here we go. We're here. Um, so in go my, goes my chicken. Now, really important thing when you are moving through a recipe, I actually took, I went forward to the next step before I'd taken the lid off, all right, which is fine because I needed to know what I was doing next. But now I do need to make sure that I tear my scales so that they're back on zero. There is absolutely nothing um, worse than, um, than you know, than start putting things in and going, oh, my goodness, I was on mine or something. I've got no idea where I am. Anyway, here is my chicken, and that is going in on the blow cover in that coconut mixture. Coconut, lemongrass, the whole Asian thing there. Okay. Simmering basket back on the top. And now it's going to cook for 18 minutes up to 100 degrees. It's on reverse because we don't want that chicken shredded. We're actually going to shred it later, but I'll show you how to do that. And we're just literally going up to speed one. Okay. And I'll actually pop a couple of recipes in the um, chat for you in just a sec, too. So, Diana, do you want us to come back to you or Michelle, do you want to? You can pop over to me if you like. So I'm just laying out the potatoes. They just come out so beautifully and even. And so it's quite easy to make, um, you know, a nice, neat potato bake where they all line up lovely. Let's see if I can change, move my camera. So that's just that there. And I, um, so take the bucket out and you'll see that the bowl is still nice and clean. So that's brilliant. And so don't forget to take this little buddy out and we're just going to continue on the recipe and you'll see how quick and easy it is. So the next step is it's asking for hundred grams of rear cheese. Um, look, I just had cheddar, so I'm just going to use that. And the scales pop up automatically. So we can just pop that all in there. Press next. We're going to pop the lid on and grate that cheese. So everything's all preset for the <laughs> And then what it's asking us is to transfer that cheese into a bowl because what we're going to do, so that cheese there, we're going to sprinkle that on top of our potato bake. So what I love about the Thermix is that it does tell me, um, takes all the thinking out for me. So, you know, I know we're not using the cheese straight away, but it's like, let's get that done and then continue on to the rest. So then that helps you cook a lot more efficiently in the kitchen. Okay. All right. And you can use whatever cheese you've got. If you've got Parmesan or a mixture of cheeses, it's perfectly okay. Um, and given the price of groceries, I do also try and find cheaper options if I can. Um, now, a Clove of garlic. If you like it really garlicky, you can certainly add another one there. 
and we're going to chop up the garlic there. And this is what I love is I don't use my garlic press anymore and I don't get to sting two fingers. That's probably one of the best things about the thermix, the way it chops up the garlic. So it's just asking us to scrape down the sides of the bowl. So I'll just show you what that's looking like now. Garlic all chopped up. And if you're new to thermomixing, don't be afraid. All, the instructions are very clear. And I have made a potato bake um, numerous times in the thermix, but I haven't actually done this recipe. So I'm cooking a recipe for the first time live. So um, you don't need to be afraid. Now, the recipe here is asking for 500 grams of um, cream. And I just read in the tips that if you wanted to make it a little bit lighter, you can replace some of the cream with milk. And that's what I've done here. So I've got half milk and half cream, and I'm going to tip that in there. But if you wanted to keep it really rich and super creamy, you certainly can. Okay, a teaspoon of salt. This little container I've got from the mix shop, I love. I've got my normal salt there and flake salt on the other side. Some people have pepper on the other side, but it's just so handy when I'm cooking, only because I think because it's got that little spoon in there as well. So a pinch of black pepper. I do like a fair amount of pepper, so I've popped some pepper in there. And then a pinch of nutmeg. A lot of um, good potato bakes have some nutmeg in there. I think I was a little bit heavy-handed, but that's okay there. And we're going to pop the lid off. Turn the dial and that's just going to mix up. So while that's mixing up, I'll just quickly lay out the last lot of my potatoes and my potato bag. And what I love about the TN6 is it's got a preview button there. So it's, you can actually look at the preview button um, or press the preview button and it will tell you what is happening next. So maybe while you've got your onions sauteing in a recipe, you can go and have a look and think, oh, well, I need this vegetable chopped up or, or chicken diced. You can do that while your Thermomix um, is cooking hands-free or doing a mode hands-free. It just frees up that time. Um, and you can use that with whatever it is, whether it's just popping on a load of washing, helping kids with homework, um, pouring yourself a glass of wine or a cup of tea, um, whatever you like. So now all we need to do, what a quick and easy recipe. I've just got to pop the last lot of potatoes, but all we need to do now is just pour that creamy liquid all over those potatoes there. So just trying to pretty it up a little bit because I'm going to have to show you if it was for just my family, I think I'd just dump it all in. <laughs> so, because we all know how quickly it gets eaten. We'll pop that in there. And this is a great recipe that you can prep ahead. So you could actually just cover this and pop this in the fridge and then the next day take it out or whenever. Um, okay, and then we're going to now sprinkle that with cheese. So here's my cheese. And look, if you want it extra che cheesy, go ahead. I think you could never have enough cheese on a potato bake. And I think if you like a little bit of extra flavour, I know some people like to put a touch of Dijon mustard in the sauce as well for a little bit of a kick. So you can always add your little special touches or a little bit of um, stock paste for extra flavour. There we go. So this is my potato bake, super quick and easy um, to prepare. I'm going to pop that into the oven to cook and then hopefully be done by the time um, the other girls are finished with their cooking. So I'll just take this to the oven now. And who are we heading off to? Is it Michelle or Mandy? I think it'll be Michelle. Somewhere. Are you ready for me now, girls? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. We don't do like a rigid run sheet because, you know, we all chat a bit and then we cook a bit and so we um we kind of roll with it. But we go, yours is going to take the longest, so you go first, and yours is second longest, so you go second. And I, what I've decided to do tonight is some rice paper rolls using jackfruit. Now, has anyone here used jackfruit before? Put your hand up or pop in the chat. I have seen it in the supermarkets and I've seen it kind of in recipes at it's often used in sort of plant-based recipes. And I, I was a bit like confused. Mine says, no, I don't know what that is. I'm not. So a bit like Diana, I kind of went, you know what? I, 
I want to show you that you can make something you've never made before on live TV. So I, I, I love rice paper rolls. They're something my kids like, you know, if they buy them, they're, what are they, $4.50 each or something like that. So um, so it's something where I thought, awesome. It shows the cutter. I'm also learning something new with the jackfruit. So if anyone has used it before, um, what I didn't get to Google today because I was running around like a little bit of a mad chook was what its nutritional value is. So but basically when you cook it, it looks like kind of pulled pork or pulled chicken. So it kind of gives you that nice texture. And if you are vegetarian or if you're looking to just introduce a bit more plant-based cooking into your diet, it's um it's a great option and not particularly expensive. So what I'm going to do is show you how how that works. But then I did a bit of a, here's some I prepared earlier because it's got to cook in the oven for 20 minutes and then cool down for another 10 minutes. So I figure I'd just do two batches and that way um, I can make some more tomorrow. My failing here, though, is that my kids always usually come in once I cook something and want to eat it, but they're not here. So um, I guess failing, their loss is my gain. It means that I've got um, a nice healthy lunch for tomorrow. So um, I'll take you over to my Thermomix. My other secret is I've actually never rolled a rice, pipe, rice paper roll before either. But, Ron, how hard can it be, Ron? Anyone has got any hot tips, though, share them with me before I start. All righty, so... Here we go. I'm going to bring you to my um, screen and I was actually just in the middle of the recipe, so I'm just going to cancel that. So I was just making sure I had everything. Okay, so here we are, as I mentioned before, on the home screen. So one of the things that um, we love about the TM6 and its integration is that it being fully connected is that you can go in and create your weekly meal plans. So I can go into here and look at my week and go, oh, these are the things that I've planned to make today. For those of you who already have a Team 6, because I know there's quite a few on, you can change this view. So you can see here, this is showing me from cook today and forward. However, if you want to see something like maybe you planned something for last night and you ended up going out or you ate leftovers or something happened, you can actually go back and scroll back to things that you've made previously and then go, oh, yeah, I made that, that chicken caprese salad last week. That was really lovely. I'm going to make that again. And when you're in the recipe, you can add it to your shopping list from the Thermomix screen. You can move it to another day. So if you plan to make it today and you didn't end up making it, you can tap move to another day and it'll give you your full calendar. So then you can bring it up and have a look and you can go, yeah, I'm going to make that next week. And then save it in there and it'll appear in the calendar for the week after. So it gives you lots of options there, which is very cool. So this is the one that I'm making, which is rice, rice paper rolls. Um, and it does say in brackets, Thermomix cutter. But I'll give you a little tip. If you didn't have the cutter, you could still make this recipe. You just have to be doing it by hand, which means this time here might be put out a little bit. So it says um, prep time, 40 minutes and total time an hour, but that's allowing for that 30 minutes of the, um, the jackfruit cooking, etc. Now you'll notice that so it says level of difficulty, easy. So, hey, I can do this, right? Um, prep time, total time, as I mentioned, and then a serving size there. Now, some of our recipes are scaled. So if when you look at that, you see a little hyperlink, it means that you can go into that recipe and it'll give you some options. So um, there are things like, say, porridge for breakfast, and it'll give you the option of two, four or six servings, for example. So you can go in or, you know, you can do the maths in your head and do that yourself as well. All of our recipes have the information down the left-hand side. So I'm going to show you the process of the jackfruit fruit and what it looks like. Um, but I hate to say I have got some pre-made. So it's preheat the oven. That's That bit's easy. Line a baking tray. That bit's easy. Um, and we start off with a garlic clove. And now it said um, eschalots. Now I went to the local green grocer and they didn't have any, so I've just gone with spring onions. So I think um, Mandy already mentioned before, I think it was about her abundance of ginger. You know, do what works for you. So if something's got garlic and you don't like it, leave it out. If you like it, Put in extra so you can really um, choose your own adventure. We do say it's a guide, you're still in control. So I've popped my garlic clove and my spring onions in there, except for three seconds, and it's asked me to go to speed five. Now, because spring onions are a little bit softer, I'm actually going to go to speed six just to give it a little bit more power to chop those. All righty, so I think we're all, we all get a bit wowed by the, that light, okay, by that chopping there. In fact, it was funny, we did a, a demo together yesterday at our Moorabbin office and um, and Diana did something and then was showing everybody and then I was like looking in the bowl as if I'd never seen that before. 
So I was having a bit of a laugh going, what am I looking? I've seen that before, but I'm still wow. So yeah, it was a bit of fun. So two teaspoons of peanut oil. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a dollop dollop. Now that's the beauty of this as well. If you're somebody who likes to measure things exactly, you can absolutely do that. But if you, um, if you like to be precise, then sorry, if you're a bit of a should be right, then that's okay too. So roll with what you like to do. Now that's going to cook for a couple of minutes, but I don't need to do the whole thing. So do either of you need to show anything, or I'm 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 good now. I've got five and a half minutes to go. Perfect. All right. Well, what I might do then, in the interest of fast tracking that, so that was going to saute, then we were going to add the jackfruit. Now, let me show you what the jackfruit looks like. It looks a bit like, almost a bit like a pineapple, slightly softy or mm, pineapple artichoke. It's an interesting, like, as I said, I hadn't seen one before. As If anyone has, has anyone commented that they've used it before or cooked with it before? I'd be interested to know what you think. So... What we'll do, and I'll show you a little um, trick here, is one of the cool things about the cutter is that when you use the cutter, you can actually, if you've got things in the bowl, you can still actually put that in. So what I'm going to do is go into my recipe detail. So that's from the three little dots next to the next bottle, uh, button and scroll down to where it says vegetables. So it says place a bowl on the mixing bowl lid and that's so I can weigh in my vegetables. Now I've already pre-weighed my um, vegetables that are going in this and I'm putting in the cutter shaft, sits in the top there, and then popping my whole cutter attachment on the top there, on the top of that jug, okay? Very easy. Alrighty, so I'm just going to bring my veggies forward because they were just around the side here. And what this has, I've got my lettuce, my carrot, and my cucumber. So very simple ingredients. Um, so what you saw with the potatoes was slicing. So I've got that. We're going to go, yep, yeah, we've got that. So it says insert the cutter shaft with the cutting side disc side number one up, which is slicing. So it's very specific. You can't, you really can't get it wrong. Place the cutter lid into position. So that's what that is there. And then put the lettuce in through the top. So I had a cos lettuce. I've sort of cut that in half. Shove that in there and then gently, it'll say gently pop that down. So once that starts to feed through, I can put the other piece in. I'm going to go next. Except for a minute, it won't take a minute, but it just means it gives you plenty of time. So I'm turning around. And put the Gave me a minute. It took me 12 seconds. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? All right. So look how beautifully that lettuce is sliced there. Can you see that? Pretty cool, hey? So I'm just going to grab out a plate. So perfect for sandwiches as well. And this is really fine because it's going into our um, it's going into our wrap. But look how beautifully it's sliced that coles. So imagine that yesterday Mandy did a beautiful coleslaw with really thinly sliced cabbage, which was beautiful as well. All righty. On that. Uh, so now we're going to flip this over with the grating side facing up. And we're going to put the cucumber in. There we go. I had to take that out. Perfect. All right. So we're going to grate the cucumber. Beautiful. So quick, hey? I've actually used this a few times for kids' lunches where I've gone, oh, I haven't really got anything prepared and um, need to pull the out. And then just gone, oh, I've got a bit of lettuce in there and then I'll throw together sort of some things. So this now has cut the cucumber kind of julienne style. Next to, next to the lettuce. Hopefully you can see that okay. And last but not least, 
we're going in and now we're still doing the grating and now we're just putting a carrot in. I just had a nice little big fat carrot so that piece going in there. And again, it's set it for a minute, but I think I'm only going to need another few minutes. Three seconds. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> tell me, anyone who's already got um, the cutter, tell me what sort of things that you've been doing with it or are you a bit afraid to use it? It might still be in the box. Move that to the side. Now we're adding a bit of color to the plate. Now, what you can see here, this was the thin slice and the thick grate. You also have a chart choice of a thick slice and a thin grate, just to tongue tie myself. So your thin grate is a really beautiful, fine grate, like what you would sort of maybe use in sandwiches or that sort of thing, and really lovely for things like radish or beetroot or any of those sorts of things. So my next instruction is to prepare the rice paper wrappers. So I'm reading the instructions about that. Has anyone given me any tips, girls, or am I just winging it? <laughs> They're fun, Michelle. Pardon? They're fun. <laughs> <laughs> they're fun. So I've, done, I've made them for girlfriends and they were a little bit messy, but they tasted good. And that's, you know, that's the main thing. And I think, you know what, that's actually the fun thing with stuff like this. Remember we made samosas once and Milan was showing us and Milan's Indian and they were folded beautifully. Hers were like perfect and ours were like these wonky things. But once we fried them up and put them on the plate, it actually just looked really, you know, homemade and they were delicious. So yeah, good fun. So it actually says to have a little dish of water, um, not too hot and not too cold. It actually says 50 degrees to be precise. I've just stuck my finger in it. I think it's good. Um, and then what I've got here is the cooked jackfruit. So how, like, if I hadn't told you what that was, what would you think it was? Looks like chicken to me. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I thought. And it's sort of got that, you know, like cool texture about it as well, which is quite cool. So let's come down here. We'll just watch this for a second. So I'm just going to, I didn't have a dish big enough to put the whole thing in. So we'll just go around in a, cir in a circle like that. And I thought the, um, because the other thing they talk about is it being sticky. So hopefully our silicon mat is the right thing to do it on. What, do you, what would you girls suggest about that? that? I think that sounds like a good idea. Perfect. Excellent. Because it's all about having the right tools for the job. All right. well, I've just had a quick look at my potato bake and yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's looking and smelling delicious. So um, this is all ready for tomorrow's dinner. So that's easy. I'll just need to whip up the salad. And I think the boys have requested some steaks. So um, that's most of dinner done for tomorrow. I just found a reason why the mat's tricky. I can't see the rice paper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think the trick too with these things is to not be too heavy-handed. You know when kids make tacos and they load it up and then the whole thing explodes? So um, so I'm going to try and be a little bit, you know, not too heavy-handed with it. So I've got rice, uh, I'm not saying rice, I've got the rice paper roll, I've got some lettuce, I've got some cucumber, um, it said some herbs. Let's see, I've got some basil here. And again, you know, it had some ideas. It said mint, whatever, you know. Again, it's always just a bit of choose your own adventure. But so put put the things that you like in. And if you don't have something, you know, that the recipe says, leave it out. That's okay. All right. So now I'm going to get a bit of this um, jackfruit mix. You might have a guest for lunch tomorrow. Yeah, I did actually speak to a girlfriend of mine who's vegetarian today and I said, if you're in the area, pop in tomorrow because uh -huh. I, I feel like it's going to make quite a few and, um, you know, I can't eat them all. So absolutely, if you're in the area, please <laughs> stick your head in. All righty. So I did watch a YouTube clip before and it had fold the sides in first. Is everyone kind of on board with that? Yeah. And then... And Actually, I'm kind of doing it on the other side. But what it then did was fold. So I folded the other end in, covering the jackfruit. 
because that's quite saucy. So get my finger unstuck from that rice paper roll. So it actually, I think the logic of that is that then that won't sort of be soggy from the sauce. Oh, you clever. See, I've got the rice paper over the top of that as well. Yeah. And then you kind of just roll it in. I think I've actually done that. Good job. Right. Well done. I'm impressed. I'm yeah. impressed. $4.50. Who wants to buy one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm coming to get one for free. <laughs> oh, all right. You know, you, know I like, you know I like to feed people, so I would give you one for free. Well, there yeah. you go. I'm actually I'm super impressed with that. <laughs> Is there, has everyone fallen asleep? I hope I'm I'm really indulging myself here, learning new things. But um, but how fun! And I really wish my daughters were here. They'd be so impressed that that would be in the lunchbox tomorrow. Yeah, that's awesome. Well done. And cool. it's so healthy as well, which is nice. Like fresh and coming into summer, like this would be a, a fantastic dish. And you could even prep it ahead for parties, picnics. Yeah. Definitely. And the other thing you could add in there, and in fact, I think the recipe might have, did it say that? I can't remember. But you could also put rice noodles in there. Oh, yes. Rather than have the rice noodles. So, I'm thinking coriander. Cut it? Coriander, I reckon. Oh, actually, do you know what? I've got a big bunch of that up there too. So anything, um, they said, it said mince and basil for this one, but again, yeah, whatever you like and whatever you've got. But, yeah, uh, you could put the noodles in there. You could leave the waities, have a bit of a dipping sauce. Uh, in fact, that satay sauce you made before, Mandy, would probably be quite nice with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I'm, I'm guessing okay. that your five minutes might be up. So yeah, it yeah, is. Your coach chicken salad. <laughs> and I might roll a couple more of these and see how I go. <laughs> yeah, okie doke. All right. Um, I, so I can do this. Um, okay, so um, so the chicken's finished cooking and the next thing it asked me to do was to take it out of the broth. Remember, it was the, the, the lemongrass, um, the, the, the leaves and the lime leaves um, and the coconut um, milk. So I've taken it out. But the other thing I just wanted to show you, Michelle was saying about, um, so a couple other things. So we actually had a salad for, for, um, for dinner and that, that's a thin sliced cucumber. And then this is the really finely grated carrot, which I just think is absolutely awesome. So I just thought I'd show you those. So that's my chicken out there. And then what it's asking me to do is um, transfer it on the plate and let it cool slightly. So I'm just going to pop it over there. Um, and then transfer approximately 100 grams of the coconut broth onto a, into a jug and set aside. So I don't know if any of you do this, but what I'm going to do is put a jug on there because my scales are on there. I'm going to access through the three little dots up here um, my scales and I'm going to pour 100 grams of um, the liquid into there. There we go. All right. So, yeah, so the three little dots will take you to all sorts of places. Wherever you see three dots, click on them and they will take you somewhere. Um, discard the rest. So now, this is the bad thing. Okay, it says discard the rest of the broth and the lemon, uh, the lemongrass and the lime leaves. But um, I'm going to pop a recipe in here in a minute, which is what I'm going to use it for. There's an awesome soup, which I know Michelle's also made, called Tom Car Guy, and it's a, an Asian style chicken soup. And I've um, I've got some chicken left, so I'm going to turn that into a soup later as well. So. Um, and then it's um, asking me to take out the blade cover. I'm going to just pull out a second bowl because I have one. Although I don't really need it, actually, thinking about what's next. Because, um, but there, I would pull the blade cover out if I was doing all this. But we decided, you've seen two people use the cutter. You didn't need to see a third person use the cutter. So um, they're saying clean and dry the mixing bowl. And as I did say uh, to the girls earlier, if I was, if I had been doing that, I actually would have done this at the beginning because then my um, my bowl was clean. Um, everything gets chopped, you know, chopped or sliced into the cutter bowl, and I can just keep going rather than having to clean and dry the mixing bowl. We always look for shortcuts. Um, it's asking me to put some snow peas. I've got sugar snap peas. I've gone a bit rogue with the veggies on this. Um, bean sprouts, not really into bean sprouts, so gave them a miss. And then it was it was um, using the cutter to prepare the other vegetables which was, uh, oh, there was some herbs in there, which I've got some coriander and some mint. Um, and then it's, um, sorry, 
vegetable temples. Um, uh, Wombok cabbage, but um, as we were talking before, at Moorabbin yesterday, I made a coleslaw, so I had some purple cabbage left, so I just did that. So, uh, so it's the cabbage, which I slice in there very finely, um, and and the carrot. That, so they were both done in the in the um, in the thermix cutter. Um, so actually, the last thing I do need to do, so I keep going with this. And another way you can do this, of course, skipping forwards in a recipe, is again, go to the three dots, go recipe detail. You can scroll down here. Uh, and done all that, up to the salad, done the salad. Okay, so I'm up to here. So I do actually need to get rid of that, but I'm going to use the clean bowl. Um, no, okay. So all I'm going to do now is shred up the chicken. Has anybody shredded chicken before? I have all the time. Yes. Yep. Any, any of our any of our guests? Anybody know what what speed you do and how you shred chicken? Because it's the most awesome thing. You can do it with pork as well. I'm going to put this in. If anybody's got any ideas, please pop them into the chat. I'll give you a second. I'm trying to be quiet and not blurt it out. I know. I'm one of those <laughs> kids that knows the answer and I just want to say it. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I, um, I'll i do it. It says five seconds speed four. I normally do four seconds speed four on reverse. Okay, but I'm going to do the five seconds. So oh, there's my... Fun, got it. Four second reverse in a TM31. So that hasn't changed. Well done. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yes, perfect. Thanks, Alison. And the shredded chicken is just perfect for sandwiches or to sprinkle over lunches, um, like salads and things like that. So um, quite often in the mornings, if I don't have anything for the school um, sandwiches, I'll just, oh, that's beautiful, Mandy. I'll often... Um, use there's a recipe well, tm6 exclusive with the sauteed chicken cubes where it cooks it on the high heat um and browns it and it's full of flavor and then i just shred that afterwards and use that awesome we might go and see how michelle's going with her and i'm just going to plate this up uh basically i'm going to put that salad on the bottom a bit of the chicken on top and then it's a mixture of the in fact i'm going to mix it up together remember i had that um the, the chilli and the ginger and everything, I'm going to mix that broth up with that. It says pour them over separately, but why would you do that? I'm going to mix it up, and that's the dressing. And then just a few of the peanuts on top and a few of those fried shallots as well because, you know, that's very Asian. Um, so I'll, I'll get that, plating that up, and we'll go back and see how Michelle's going with her um, rice paper rolls. Oh, I'm doing great. Look, I've made three now. I'm just showing off. But, hey, the other thing I thought I'd show you, because um, I'm going away on the weekend for a few days, so I always do this. I'm going to clean my fridge because I don't want anything to go to waste. And so I had a few mandarins that were a bit sort of, you know, not, not nice enough for a lunch box, but not, you know, certainly nothing I'd throw out. So whenever that happens, it'll either go in the freezer or I'll make a juice. And I kind of figure... If I make a juice tonight, then I've got one for the morning. And I know a lot of people ask about juicing in the thermomix. So has anyone got a minute for me to make you a juice tonight? I actually found, so we have an orange tree in our backyard. We share it with the possums and we managed to get a few for us. So I found, actually found a recipe that was orange and mandarin juice. So I have got here my oranges and my mandarins. Now it does say to take all the white pith off and stuff. That's just really about the bitterness. So I'm a bit lazy. I don't bother. But I also had a few strawberries and, you know, they're, they're not mouldy, but they're just soft. They're not nice enough to put in, again, put in a lunchbox or whatever. Um, so I'm going to throw them in my juice as well. I had a little piece of ginger uh, and I had a few blueberries as well. So they were just all things that were, again, I never throw anything out. So just think about what you can do with it. All of these things could have gone in the freezer as well to use another time. You could turn it into a fruity dream, which is one of our favourite ice cream dessert, sort of a healthy treat for the kids, or uh, you can do what I'm doing now, which is just a juice. Uh, what I often do with the kids actually is I make these sort of juices and then I'll, I'll bring them out and I go, I've made a juice, you have to guess what's in it. And I'll say there are six things or there are five things or there are eight things and then they, um, you know, then they'll, they'll 
kind of have a play and see if they can guess what it is. And obviously some flavours are more distinctive than others, aren't they? So, so I'm going to go into my week and I had chosen this recipe, which is mandarin and orange. I'm going to go straight into it and go start cooking. Um, so it says six mandarins, approximately 415 grams. So I had six and two oranges. My oranges were pretty little, so I've actually used um, three oranges. Um, now it says a lemon. I didn't put the lemon in, but I've got a bit of um, ginger, as I said, and I've got some berries. Now it actually also says sugar. I'm not going to add sugar because I don't mind. I figure my berries will add a little bit of sweetness to, to this um, juice, so I don't think I need to add sugar. Um, and again, that's where we say it's it's completely up to you. Now there's my ice. So what the ice will do is um, help break up all the fibres. So I just had a few ice cubes in this thermo server to keep them cold and frozen. And we're going to pop that lid on. The beauty of a juice like this is that, um, and actually in that minute someone might want to talk, but it because the oranges and mandarins have a lot of juice, it may not need any water. Whereas if it was, say, carrots and beetroot and things like that, you'd be adding a bit of water. So this may, we'll have a look at it and I'll we'll see if it needs water or not. So five, speed five. I'm just having a look for the Song Club Guy recipe, which I will pop up here too, because it is um, a really delicious um, soup. Um, very easy and the perfect way to use up the rest of the um, um, coconut mixture that my chicken's poached in because in the recipe, that's pretty much what you do. All right. Oh, for gosh, what, what the recipe is. Well, I took my um, potato bake out. Oh, um, and it it's pretty nice and browned and I think we can, like I could probably cook it for a bit longer, but I'm actually even, I haven't checked to see if it's cooked through yet, but I'll just show oh, you. Oh, it I'll looks break. delicious. How good is that and how easy was that? It's That's like awesome. It's foolproof, hands-free cooking. That's what we love around here. Um, so that's for tomorrow's dinner. So I, I didn't mind if it wasn't properly cooked through because I'll heat that all up again tomorrow. But that was a nice, simple, quick and easy um, side dish. So, you know, if you've got a barbecue or something happening and you need to bring a dish, you can always um, add a potato bag. And the good thing is too, I this is the cast iron dish from um, the mix shop and it's only half full. So if you did actually want to bulk this recipe up, it's one of those ones that you can double, triple, whatever, um, quite easily and feed a crowd too. And it makes a great um, vegetarian dish as well. So all you need to do is make just a nice crisp garden salad and I think everyone would be very happy with that. So Looks good awesome, thing any cheeses from um, a cheese platter that's left over as well. Yeah. Uh, and um, and there's another recipe is just the vegetable bake where you use different vegetables in the in the yes. bake, which is awesome. Yep. I'll just show you. I plated up this salad. Um, there we go. Oh, that looks so fancy. It is so <laughs> fancy. It's so delicious too. I can't wait. That's my lunch. Oh, no, no, sorry. I'm going around for a jackfruit um, thing. <laughs> but if, if I wasn't... <laughs> Um, I've got lunch as well. So that is restaurant quality. Look at that. Well, I'm very and, uh, impressed. I think I need to make that recipe now. I know. Uh, it's, really it's really just I've, I've made it quite a lot and it is awesome. This is what we love about doing these classes, is each one of us will make something where the others go, oh, I'm gonna make that now. Because yeah. we all, you know, we have different families and different things that we're cooking for. So I did add a little bit of water. The recipe says half a litre. I didn't feel like it needed that much, but and you'll notice, um, you may have noticed that I didn't take the tops off my strawberries. No need, give them a wash, a bit of extra <laughs> fibre. No one knows, you can't taste it. So, and I've got some good, oh, yum. I'm just wondering if you're going to turn fluoro orange. It looks a bit fluoro orange. <laughs> it is a bit orange, <laughs> um, but it's delicious. Normally, actually, when I do a choose your own adventure juice, because blueberries often go in, but if they're yeah. spinach or something as well, it goes a bit brown. It's not pretty. Yeah. I can say close your eyes and just taste it because it, it doesn't look pretty, but it tastes good. But this one looks pretty too. It does. Um, and, you know, with lots of buns going around, what a great option to have a nice vitamin C hit as well. 
So how's that for my healthy, healthy night? I say that because I did eat um, honeycomb today that Diana made yesterday and I went, oh, just take some pieces for the kids and they never saw them. Yet. So, <laughs> um, so thank you so much for joining us all tonight, uh, people. We've had so lots of fun. I think we've really indulged ourselves tonight. So I hope there's been something tonight that you've gone, wow, I'm going to have a go at that. Pop it in the chat if there is or if you've got any questions, We'll stop recording in a minute so you can um, just stay on and have a chat with us if you would like. If you're interested in upgrading your Thermomix or investing in a Team 6, please speak to whoever invited you tonight because I know they would happily help you get a Thermomix on your bench and show you how to use it. If you've already got a Thermomix on your bench and you want to have your own personal in-home demo with you and a couple of friends, you would be eligible for host rewards. So some of the things that we've used tonight, including the map that I've used, thermo servers, the cutter, so depending on what your needs are, we've got lots of things to choose from, or your next year's cookie do subscription, which is also one of our great options. Or if you're going, I love those crazy gals, I want to join them. Well, let me know and I can uh, give you some information about that. We do actually have an information session tomorrow morning at 11.30 on Zoom. So thank you again for joining us and we have loved cooking for you. I will send the recording through and we are doing this all again next Thursday, but with, of course, completely different dishes keeping in mind that, you know, with grand final on the weekend and lots of people entertaining. In fact, my sister-in-law rang today and she's already put, I'm doing pasta salad and I'm doing coleslaw. So that'll be like, oh, easy peasy. So uh, if you've got any inspirational things you'd like to see next Thursday, let me or let us know and we will see if we can accommodate you. Uh, I will stop recording. And as I said, I'll stay on um, if anyone has any questions and wants to come off mute. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Diana. Thanks, Mandy. Amazing. Hey, everyone. Pleasure.